This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good day and welcome. We're coming on the air with breaking news. The special counsel whose probe led to the first federal criminal charges ever filed against a former president is set to speak any moment now. This will be the first time we've heard from special counsel Jack Smith since he was appointed to lead the investigation. His statement comes after the indictment of Donald Trump was unsealed this afternoon. It detailed 37 counts of breaking seven different laws, all related to his handling of classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago home. Those charges include 31 counts of willful retention of national defense information. The Justice Department just released these new photos of those documents, and the indictment says they came from all of the top national security and law enforcement agencies, including the CIA, the Pentagon, and the NSA. The indictment also says he showed classified documents to others twice in 2021. And as a reminder, Mr. Trump has denied any wrongdoing. I want to go to our senior legal correspondent, Laura Jarrett, and NBC News legal analyst, Danny Savalos. Laura, first to you, it seems like they are building a narrative of what happened, but also trying to make the point that Mr. Trump knew what he was doing was unauthorized. This document serves as a rebuttal to a lot of the defenses that we've heard put out out there by the former president, by his attorneys, by his allies. And this document actually has some meat on the bones, things that we've never heard before, talking about his personal involvement in how these boxes actually got down to Mar-a-Lago. We've talked about potential defenses a lot. One of his best defenses would have been if he had been able to say, I don't know anything about how they got down there. Once they got down there, I had nothing to do with it. This takes this head on to say he was receiving pictures of the documents. He's getting all kinds of communications from his body man and other employees about where they are at all times. Are they in the bathroom? Are they in the shower? Are they in that grand ballroom we just saw a picture of? He is intimately involved in the transportation and whereabouts of these boxes over a period of months. Danny, I'm not a lawyer, but going through it, I, I see points where it appears the prosecution is anticipating some of the lines of defense and cutting them off. Absolutely. And a lot of these relate to inadvertence. In other words, we've known for a long time that documents went from D.C. down to Mar-a-Lago and they stayed there. But the real challenge for the government was always showing evidence of intent. And by showing all of these interactions with Trump and maybe people below him, his, co his alleged co-conspirator, the government pieces together what they think makes the case for intent knowledge, knowledge that he retained the documents and intent to either keep them, not turn them back over. Keep in mind that many of these elements of these different crimes overlap. There are parts of concealment of documents that are really very similar to parts of intentional retention of the documents. There are parts of document destruction that are similar to other counts or other elements of other crimes. So uh, here you have a lot of overlapping elements of crimes that the government really focuses on intent. Just like Laura said, they know that Trump's, one of his chief defenses is going to be my underlings, the people below me. I have a team, they handle this, they swept these documents into boxes. I was a hands-off kind of guy. I thought most of it was mine, or I just didn't know any better. That's what this indictment in my mind sets out to do, to defeat that out of the gate, the idea that Trump simply knew nothing, saw nothing, and heard no evil. The other thing that jumps out at me is that all eyes now are on Waltine Nauta, Trump's alleged co-conspirator in this case. This, to me, strikes me as the ideal person that the government would be interested in discussing a plea agreement with and possibly bringing Waltine Nauta over to their side as a possible cooperating witness. This is almost a textbook idea in the government's mind of someone who could be incredibly helpful, someone who knows the target very well, and someone who may know more even than the government already knows, which is saying a lot because this indictment indicates 
indicates they, the government knows quite a bit. But it's worth noting they tried. They tried to flip him months ago and failed. According to our reporting, they brought his attorney into a meeting at the Justice Department uh, last winter and tried to have that discussion, confronting the attorney, essentially saying, we think he wasn't straightforward with us, but the attorney uh, didn't show any interest in well, cooperating. Well, the prosecution now laying its cards on the table, indicating what it has or thinks it has. I want to bring in former U.S. attorney and senior FBI official Chuck Rosenberg. Uh, Chuck, an NBC News contributor also, and we're waiting. You see the uh, on the other side of the screen uh, the podium where Jack Smith will be speaking here shortly. And, and toward that end, let me ask you, Chuck, uh, he's not obligated to make a statement. He's been quiet publicly during this entire process. Uh, what would you expect to be the pressures on him, if at all, to come out and make a statement on the back of, of this release today? Well, first, Lester, appropriately quiet during the pendency of the investigation, just as Mr. Mueller was. It's not um, okay for prosecutors to speak publicly uh, about investigations with very limited exceptions not applicable here. Second, now that there is an unsealed indictment, here's what you should expect. Relatively constrained, relatively little, no embellishments. When I gave these types of press conferences as a United States attorney, I was required to stick to what we call the four corners of the document. He will describe who has been charged and what they have been charged with. But you're not going to get any color, or any flourishes, or any embellishments. You're going to get basically stuff, Lester, that you can read and have read in the indictment that's just been unsealed. That's the duty of a prosecutor. Because the grand jury has returned its indictment, because the indictment is now in the public record, in the public domain, it's okay to speak about it. But he won't go further. And if he has something more to say, he'll say it in court. Well, t talk to me about the whole idea of a, of a special counsel. Um, does the DOJ have any involvement right now in, the, in this case, or is it strictly Mr. Smith's office? Well, so far, it seems to be strictly Mr. Smith's office. Uh, the Attorney General of the United States has ultimate authority for all aspects of the Department of Justice, including a special counsel, meaning that if Mr. Garland had wanted to intervene because he thought something was off the rails or improper, he could have done so. For all we know, Lester, that has not happened, that Mr. Garland has given Jack Smith free reign to run this case as he sees fit. That was essentially the design of the special counsel regulations. It replaced the independent counsel statute. Folks will remember that Ken Starr uh, and independent counsel, some thought he went too far, strayed from the main thrust of his investigation. And so the special counsel regulations were designed to rein that in a bit. Bob Mueller was a special counsel. John Durham was a special counsel. And now Jack Smith is a special counsel, and Merrick Garland has kept his hands off of the investigation. I think that's the appropriate thing here. He is ultimately responsible for the operation of the entire Department of Justice, but did not seem to interfere in Mr. In Mr. Smith's investigation. All right, Chuck, if you'll uh, stand by it again, remind folks on the other side of the screen for me, you're looking at the podium where Jack Smith will uh, be speaking, making a statement, not taking any questions, uh, we're told, and he may be running a little late, but you can see them making the adjustments to the flags and whatnot. Let's go right to our senior Washington correspondent, Hallie Jackson, right now. Uh, Hallie, I guess the question is, what's going to be controlling the narrative today? Obviously, this uh, unsealed document speaks loudly. We're going to hear from the special counsel. What are we hearing from the former president, if anything? Well, he, since the indictment has dropped, Lester, is going after the person we're about to see step to that microphone there, and that is special counsel Jack Smith. That is not new for Donald Trump. He has been attacking the people investigating him now for months. But obviously, this takes on a different dimension since this indictment has been unsealed, since the charges have come out, calling, and I'm only going to quote a short bit here, but calling Smith, among other things, a deranged psycho and a Trump hater. Uh, again, no evidence to support that Jack Smith is a Trump hater, as we've talked about previously in Donald Trump's attacks on Mr. Smith. 
That said, Lester, this is the Donald Trump playbook. He is already fundraising off of these federal charges. He already has a merch out about these federal charges. Much of this, as I'm keeping an eye just a bit on the microphone okay, here, speaks yeah, two to... two-minute warning we're getting right now. Yep, yep, speaks to the sort of mindset that Donald Trump had after his first indictment. Different charges, different levels, state, not federal, um, but in the way that the campaign tried to politically use this to their advantage. The question is, given the extraordinary revelations in this indictment, Lester, that you have been talking through there in New York, does the political center hold outside of Donald Trump? His team, by all accounts, is already, and if past precedent is any indication, digging in defiantly here that Donald Trump did nothing wrong and that this is merely uh, the former president being victimized by an overly partisan Department of Justice. That's their perspective. Will those in the broader Republican orbit agree, given the revelations that we're seeing here? I'm talking about not just the former president's uh, competitors in the Republican primary, but key members of, I'm thinking, Senate leadership, et cetera, uh, who have a stake in the national security apparatus of the United States, Lester. All right, Hallie Jackson, and you saw uh, some activity at the podium that was uh, one of the assistants or aides letting us know that we will exp uh, see the uh, special counsel in about two minutes, and that was about a minute ago. Uh, so we'll continue to keep an eye on this picture. Laura, let me just go to you very quickly. Um, again, Jack Smith, not widely known among people. What do we know about it? career uh, federal prosecutor, highly experienced war crimes prosecutor, um, someone who has a reputation for being uh, quite aggressive and uh, dogged. And here we see him walking in right there in the middle. Good afternoon. Today, an indictment was unsealed charging Donald J. Trump with felony violations of our national security laws, as well as participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice. This indictment was voted by a grand jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. And I invite everyone to read it in full, to understand the scope and the gravity of the crimes charged. The men and women of the United States intelligence community and our armed forces dedicate their lives to protecting our nation and its people. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States, and they must be enforced. Violations of those laws put our country at risk. Adherence to the rule of law is a bedrock principle of the Department of Justice, and our nation's commitment to the rule of law sets an example for the world. We have one set of laws in this country, and they apply to everyone. Applying those laws, collecting facts, that's what determines the outcome of an investigation. Nothing more and nothing less. The prosecutors in my office are among the most talented and experienced in the Department of Justice. They have investigated this case hewing to the highest ethical standards, and they will continue to do so as this case proceeds. It's very important for me to note that the defendants in this case must be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. To that end, my office will seek a speedy trial in this matter, consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. We very much look forward to presenting our case to a jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. In conclusion, I would like to thank the dedicated public servants of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, with whom my office is conducting this investigation and who work tirelessly every day upholding the rule of law in our country. I'm deeply proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with them. Thank you very much. Why Florida, sir? Why did you decide to bring the case in Florida? Jack Smith taking no questions. Uh, we uh, were, were told ahead of time that he wouldn't, but making about a, a two and a half minute uh, statement there, defending the integrity of uh, his team and those who've worked on this case, uh, saying that uh, uh, strongly defending his team, saying there is one set of laws 
and they apply to everyone, referring to uh, the former president and inviting people to read the document in full and uh, saying that violation of security laws puts our country at risk. Notably, he did not uh, speak to the narrative or the or the evidence that's contained in today's release. Uh, Danny, let me start with you. Your reaction to what you just heard. No surprises. Chuck Ros Rosenberg said it. I think we all knew it. He was going to come out. And the textbook response here is, here's the indictment. Look at it. My work is done. Thank the men and women of the FBI who contributed, any other agencies that contributed, and move on. No questions. So no surprises from Jack Smith here. Uh, he did his speaking. His team did their speaking. And law enforcement all spoke through this multiple page indictment, which lays out a lot of detail, far more detail than you need in a federal indictment. I mean, the fact that they would include photographs and all of the uh, the information that they did uh, sends a message. And the message is we believe we have the goods. He knows his every word is being scrutinized, his every movement. Uh, this is the first time we have ever heard him speak uh, since he was appointed uh, last year. And it's interesting to me to note just his his uh, affect, his disposition. It's solemn. He wanted everyone to understand the scope and the gravity of what's at stake here, emphasizing that this is about what's critical for the safety and security think, for the United States. I think this is the last we'll hear of him until trial? I bet so. Yeah, I think. I think I think that he wanted to get something out, obviously, right now, because there is going to be this delay until the indictment is, you know, actually presented for his arraignment on Tuesday. And it, there's it's a lot of time to fill. And I think he felt the need to actually stand up there and represent the department in that time. All right. Well, let me bring back a former U.S. attorney and senior FBI official Chuck Rosenberg. Chuck, uh, he, he talked about his office will seek a speedy trial. We hear that term all the time, speedy trial. What does that look like in practicality? Sure. Great question. So there are references to speedy trial, both in the statutes of the United States and in the Constitution of the United States. And both sides, a defendant and the government, are entitled to a speedy trial. A government's case never gets better with age. Danny is a very good defense attorney, and he would tell you that the more time he has as a defense attorney, the more the advantage slightly begins to shift in his direction the government would tell you the opposite. They have done their investigation, they have dotted their I's, they have crossed their T's. I should add, by the way, Lester, every word in that indictment was fly spec. No word goes into that indictment unless the government has a document, an email, a text message, a witness who can attest to the veracity of those words. But over time, if you don't get a speedy trial, memories fade, uh, witnesses may become reluctant to testify. Other bad things can happen to degrade a government's case. So Jack Smith wants a speedy trial. He's ready. The indictment demonstrates that Mr. Trump may have a different motive. It will be up to the judge to decide when this case is tried and hopefully we'll keep it on a good track to trial. Well, the former president, I mean, certainly has the, 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 the right, I'm sure you'd agree, to take all legal options that he has, but he also has a reputation for getting a way to, 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 to kick the can down the road and lengthen out the process. Are there many avenues like that afforded to him in a federal prosecution such as this? That's a great question, because most of his can kicking down the road, Lester, occurred in civil trials and in state court. And having practiced as a federal prosecutor um, in, uh, a, 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 as, a, as a criminal prosecutor in federal court, I can tell you that it is a very different environment. Uh, the federal judges in front of whom I appeared ran very tight courtrooms, adhered strictly to the schedules they set. There wasn't a lot of opportunity to kick cans down the road. Now, look, a case will also be delayed on occasion because of its complexities and on occasion because of its motions and possibly because there is an interlocutory or, or interim appeal to an appellate court challenging a judge's ruling. All of those things can introduce delay. But by and large, criminal cases in federal court move with a degree of alacrity that you simply don't find in civil cases and that you often don't find in state courts. Chuck Rosenberg, always appreciate your analysis. Thank you. That concludes this NBC News special report. We're going to hand off our coverage to my colleagues, Ellison Barber and Vicki Wynn, right now.